We're always building PCs to play games. Let's make a PC to make games. So we uh, made a mouse. I've been killing people on the internet with this for several months now, and it is deadly accurate thanks to the PWM3310 infrared sensor that we put in there with no acceleration whatsoever. Have a nice rubberized coating. It's called the standard issue because there's no frills. It is just serious business, no software. Plug it in and it works. Head over to uh, Epic Pants to check it out. We also have some pretty awesome combinations where you can buy the mouse and a gaming mat, and you're going to save a you know nice chunk of money. Go ahead and check it out. It's so accurate it'll melt your skin. That's a guarantee from somebody. We're making a Zweihander video game. If you guys haven't seen it, it's freaking awesome. Uh, Will is going to be our head developer, and he'll be here after a while to talk about it. What we're going to do is we're going to build it, send him home for a couple of weeks, and then when he comes back, he'll tell us how he likes it. Let's talk about what we put into this machine. First off, the case, the Mastercase Pro 5 from Cooler Master. There's a gazillion options for expandability. Almost everything is modular. Literally almost every different piece of it comes off. And the whole idea here is that you can go and get different, a few different things. If you want a different top, you can go get a different top. If you want something different on the front, you can get that. If you want, uh, you know, different hard drive trays or different cages, you can go and get those. We're not gonna be putting too much in here. But in the future, we may end up adding a few more hard drives or some graphics cards or something like that so we can test out SLI or Crossfire or whatever. And this gives us all the options we need for future expandability, plus some decent airflow options. For the uh, motherboard, we decided to go with the Asus X99-A. This one is reliable uh, from our experience. We've used this in the studio for a while. I, I like all the fan controls. You know, that's kind of nice. You, you get per header fan controls. Uh, even if it's a three pin fan, it'll still work with the uh, software you can control it in the uefi or in the in, in the os it's got all the ports we need got an m.2 slot and it's x99 which means we're going to be able to use uh, some decent cpus speaking of cpus we decided to go with the intel 5820k and that's a six core part it's the least expensive six core part so it's sort of a budget um you know budget move you could go for a xeon if you're doing some really heavy stuff or and you, you know if you have a bigger budget uh, but right now we don't have a huge budget. Most of this is coming out of the Zweihander uh, music sales. So yeah, the budget's not huge on this. To keep it cool, we're going to try out the Master Air Maker 8. It sort of matches the Master Case as well. Um, now this one is interesting. These are not standard heat pipes. These are vapor chambers. And what they do is uh, some liquid in here, it heats up and then it turns into a vapor and moves away as it goes up the pipes. It cools down uh, once it's up here in the stack of fins. So it's a pretty interesting technology. The other thing that's nice about this is it's very customizable and has a decent look to it. So for the top, we have a metal plate and uh, there's some LEDs there. If you want to cover up the LEDs and just put the metal plate on there and have the Cooler Master logo glow, you can do that. Or if you want to see the LEDs more, you can use sort of the, uh, the opaque uh, cover that comes with it. Uh, also, this one uh, does support 3D printing. So if you wanted to 3D print your own, the schematics are on uh, Cooler Master's website. You can grab them and 3D print your own top to make it look like whatever you want. The fans are important to me and uh, they're using the Silencio... Uh, FP fans. Now, uh, these have their double ball bearing. They're really nice and quiet, which is important to me. And uh, they've got a decent aesthetic, but that's sort of uh, neither here nor there. One thing I will say is this thing, um, if you're installing this with uh, RAM, it has to be low profile RAM. We're using some G-Skill RAM, 32 gigabytes of G-Skill uh, DDR4, uh, the Ripjaws variety. And with that memory in there, we had to turn this sideways so that the fans are venting out the top instead of out the back. Not a typical way to do things, but it shouldn't create any airflow issues. It does rotate the Cooler Master logo sideways for some of you guys who are incredibly insane about the positioning of the logos. You may be like, ugh, it's sideways. I don't care for that. Well, you're gonna have to deal with it. Graphics cards are really damn important when you're building a system like this. So we decided to go uh, not all the way to the top. If you wanted to go to the top, you could with a 980 uh, Ti or a uh, Fury X. We decided to go for something that's going to be stable, has a decent overclock, and is going to be decently quiet, but also really powerful. The EVGA GeForce GTX 980 Hybrid. Uh, this one is quite overclocked, all the way at uh, 1291 and 1393 on the boost clock. It's just going to get the job done really well. It's also a good price point, especially for a hybrid uh, air and uh, water-cooled graphics card. We just had to find somewhere to put the radiator and we're going to throw it in the top. So this one's going to really, really get the job done. On our second system, we're probably going to build that one with a uh, Fury X so that we can test the game with both AMD and NVIDIA hardware. Uh, and also with this one, since we put the radiator in the top, we do have room to expand and add a second one once we start doing some SLI testing. We'll go ahead and grab a second one put it in here, and then mount that radiator in the back. You guys don't have to go all the way for the radiator. I quite enjoy the ACX 2.0 cooling unit uh, that EVGA makes. 
Uh, I'm actually using that in my own personal rig with the 980Ti. Uh, we decided to go with another EVGA product, the Supernova 850G2 power supply. It's gold rated. Uh, for, the, for the money, you, in my opinion, get quite a bit. It's fully modular, so you just plug up the cords that you need. And one thing I really like about this power supply is it has an economy mode. You can turn that on. It basically makes it run in a fanless mode at really low uh, power draws. Uh, and then very silent otherwise, but it um, helps to reduce the heat, helps to reduce the power consumption, and also keeps things nice and quiet. So that plus the modularity, full uh, Japanese capacitors on this one. Um, it's just a really high quality unit. But one of the things that's really interesting about this is they're, they're backing it all up with a 10-year warranty. They got several on their website, um, and only a few have the full 10-year warranty. And a power supply is going to be very important for this machine. We don't want anything to go wrong, so we, not, we wanted a really nice power supply delivering clean power. Uh, that 10 year warranty is certainly quite nice. Let's talk about some storage options. So first off, we started off with an M.2 drive. So there's a couple different options here. We ended up going with one we already had around. We had the, um, the Samsung, it's just an AHCI uh, controlled card. It's a Samsung XP941 uh, M.2. And uh, that one's an 80 millimeter PCI Express 2.0 by four. It gets 1000 by 800 on the read and write around 1080 by 1000. Now, in this machine, you can go ahead and uh, grab like one of the NVMe Samsung 950 Pros and get quite a bit more speed. Uh, we would have, you, you know, grabbed one of those if we didn't already have one of the uh, the other ones lying around. All right, for just some storage, we decided to go with the Neutron Series XT. Now, these things are Fizon-based SSDs, and we went with the, the big guy, the, the 960 gigabytes, so it's around one terabyte. And this one can do sustained of 500, 540 all day long. And it's going to give us enough space to really play around with some extra textures and just a little bit of extra bloat while we're creating the game. Uh, this system's not going to have a lot of other games installed on it, so we, we won't need too much extra space. But, uh, you know, the developer did, uh, or Will, the developer did put his old 500 gigabyte hard drive in there just for grins. And if he really needs any extra, we can get him an HGST, 4 terabyte drive. Those things are just, you can shoot them with a gun and they'll still work. They're really, really nice. On top of that, we grabbed the A-Data XPG SX900, one of my favorite old uh, Sandforce-based SSDs. We have we have one of those here, and um, we went with the 256-gigabyte version in that. And this one is going to be our Linux drive because we're going to have a build um, you know, for Linux at the same time. So that's the system. So now we're going to give the system to Will. And when, after this cut right here, uh, it's going to be a couple of weeks later, and you'll see how, uh, how he likes it and uh, see what we've got going on with the game. This is William. He's developing the game. That's what we built this thing for. So we built it. You guys saw that. You've had this for three weeks. About three weeks. So what were you using before this? It was a dinosaur. It was an Alienware Aurora R4. I bought it about four years ago, but it was already an economy model when I purchased right. it. Right. So. so no SSD or anything like no, that? No, no SSD. I was running a <laughs> GeForce GTX 550, I want to say. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, just really out of date, totally out of date. That's what he was using to make the game. Can you believe it? So now you're making the game with this Unreal Engine 4. Yes, Unreal Engine 4. How's the feeling uh, difference? It is a world of difference. I, I couldn't believe it. I I sat down and like everything is just instantaneous. Like There's absolutely no delay. Frame rate is perfect in the engine. I can, mm -hmm. I can have m multiple viewport windows in, so I can be running like three separate perspective viewports with epic graphic settings and, right. and nothing just doesn't bat an eye. It's just yeah. perfect. Uh, how, how about flawless. the EVGA? That thing seems to be doing pretty good. Yes. I mean, it's, it's super quiet, and it's just like, um, you know, performance is, is incredible. I, I've noticed that... Uh, you know, just um, the settings in, in Skyrim, you know, on the old machine, obviously, when I would go to, you, there's a little slider engine scaling settings. Right. And I would always have to drop everything to low on my previous machine. And now, like, I set things to, to epic. And I even grabbed the um, the light mass settings from the um, realistic uh, um, ar architectural visualization demo, right. which cranks everything to max to get it as real as possible. And that, uh, even putting that in there, it still just runs flawlessly. The EVGA is, um, I haven't noticed any any temperature spikes or anything. And uh, yeah, just performance is great. Yeah, I mean, it's water cooled, so yeah. why not? Just yeah. Tax the hell out of it. So I guess we'll talk a little bit about the game. We'll talk just, just a tiny bit, but this is not like we're not going to give away too much. Uh, and this is like super alpha. We don't even have the textures in there and stuff, just, just running around. But um, 
Have you enjoyed the, the the style of game as far as uh, as far as that goes? Yes, definitely. It's uh, it's really neat to be able to build uh, a two D game, which you know we all grew up playing right. stuff like that, like the side scrollers Mario back in the day. And but it's really neat to be able to build a game like that, but in three D. Um, just gives you so much more um, control over you know like your environment and uh, and the scenery and everything you're um, you know you don't just have scrolling layers you know you have like all that stuff is actually there so cinematically um, you know when we do some cutscenes and everything that right. just is going to give us so much freedom to uh, to create some really immersive experiences if anybody's wondering the the uh, the game the graphics are completely alpha right now and uh, one thing that's going to change all the way almost toward the end it'll look quite a bit different um, we're going to redo some of the lighting and that sort of thing, you know, the, the different effects. Right. And we'll, we'll, there's a lot of that kind of stuff that's going to be added in, uh, you know, the, the particle effects, volumetric fog and uh, depth of field. All that kind of stuff will be layered in probably a little later. But right now you just get an idea for the, the general feel we're going for. Uh, tell everybody what tools you're using besides just the Unreal Engine. Okay, so basically we have... Uh for building our, our base landscape, we're using World Machine uh, Professional Edition, and uh, the reason uh, for that is that we're using a world composition within Unreal Engine, which allows us to create a massive open world tiled landscape. So each section is is just ridiculously detailed, and um, and it loads them in intelligently based on you know the distance. Uh, from the player, but you can also create layers so that you know if they're if you're sitting on one landscape tile, but you need to see the distant mountains in the background, you can create a layer that that will still populate those in the memory so that you know you can have that beautiful um, majestic view. So we're using World Machine uh, for creating really natural, uh, realistic. I was saying before you go on to, from World Machine to the next yes. thing, I want to mention that. Um, People are like, oh, that's a lot of stuff. The game is going to be somewhat seamless. We're not going to have levels. It's going to be a giant world that you can, right. in 2D, sort of like, I guess, Metroid did that, where you just, one giant map, you could go, like, back and forth from, like, the first level to the last level. You can keep, you'll, you'll be able to, you know, retrace your steps, and there'll be lots of different things to do. Possibly, if you come back during a different point in the game, there might be some other quests and side quests right. you could pick up. But who who knows? That's that's just yeah. sty stylized, or stylistically, what the game's going to be like. But um, that explains why we have... All these different tiles. So right. anyway, let me let you go on from World Machine to the next. And and going along with what you were saying, yeah. uh, it, having the having the um, the game mechanic that we've integrated, where you know you can turn down a path, and then we're not restricting ourselves in a development sense to a to a linear sort of uh, environment in our maps. Right, and more so, more secrets on turning down a path later. Right. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so in addition to uh, World Machine, uh, we're using uh, Quixel Suite uh, 2.0, which includes uh, you know Dedu, uh, Endu uh, texturing tools, so that for a lot of our props and possibly even uh, the characters, we're going to be pumping them through that software to just give them another layer of detail and realism, and really utilizing um, those features of that software suite, which uh, is you know just state of the art, all the, all of the big. Um, AAA titles are are using uh, that suite as well as Substance Designer and Substance Painter, and then we are also using uh, a plugin uh, that is available on the Unreal Marketplace, which is uh, the RPG Starter Kit. Which uh, we're doing a lot of modifying of that. Heavily, but, yeah, but it yes. was a good. It was a good base. Yeah, it was a good base to um, really just give us the the functional elements of the type of game that we're making. Yeah, quests and inventory and that sort of thing. So, so even though it's two D, you'll have quests and you'll have inventory and you'll have dialogue trees. Right. So, and, and possibly even some other surprises as well. And as far as um, foliage that we're uh, mm -hmm. using, um, we're using Speed Tree subscription for games, uh, which is just gonna. It's giving us incredible detailed. Um, tree models and you know bushes and anything mm -hmm. you know that you can or po populate organically um, along your terrain and those are dynamic they respond to wind variables so you know we could we can place those manually we can we can pop populate them intelligently based on you know rainfall and and uh, slope angle and you know everything all the all the natural factors that occur in forest growth that's a bit crazy and yeah it's, it's pretty impressive and uh, but then we can also uh, you know create um, wind and and like falling leaves and all kinds of things like that within the engine uh, using those speed trees so some really top-end software so we'll be using faceware live 2.0 for uh, our facial mo motion capture for um, a lot of the main characters mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, a lot of plugins, a lot of a lot of top end software suites, and I'm really excited. It's going to be pretty um, 
pretty incredible um, having the opportunity to to use great tools. Yeah, and the project. thing that uh, I'll be using with Chris and also you is uh, Artisy Draft. Uh, that program is basically designed to allow us to create all the characters and towns. It's a huge, I guess, what's the word, outline, or it's even bigger than that. There's a, a it's, you create your design document, you create all your characters and dialogue. It's almost like a database. It sort is of kind building. of like a database. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then it just basically... Uh, we write some plugins, or we have to kind of write our own plugin, but it, it is compatible with the Unreal Engine. So if I create a character, uh, you know, we just have a little bit of, um, I guess it'd be C++ right. in between that program and Unreal Engine. So I write a character, and he shows up in the Unreal That's Engine right. in, in the assets and, and whatnot. Yeah, because all of the, the content that you generate from that program is all XML data, which yeah. is usable by Unreal Engine. So. so that'll be really handy as well as far as doing all the, you know, the dialogue and the characters and the locations and stuff. It'll just pop up in the game and... We can start using these things. So a lot of work to do, uh, mostly your work yeah. to do and, and some of the team. A lot and, on my plate. <laughs> thanks, thanks to everybody on the forum. We've got some guys volunteering to yes. do some texturing stuff. You guys are awesome. Um, and I don't know if we want to talk about some of the software that they're using as well. To sure, yeah, the you haven't mentioned. Yeah, they've, uh, uh, some, some people, you know, they're spread around the uh, the industry. A lot of people favor 3D Studio Max. Some people like Maya. And uh, we definitely have some people working in ZBrush doing the high poly versions of the characters, the, the sculpted versions. And uh, for baking, we, like I said, we will be using uh, um, the Quixel Suite, which does kind of its own baking, but then also multi-map exporter within ZBrush. And I, I can almost guarantee we'll be making use of X Normals, which is tried and true, been around mm -hmm. for a long time. And possibly we even have some people using Blender. I'm, I'm not quite sure about that yet, but that's... Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I never so. write off Blender. It's, it's pretty good for landscape as well. You know, yeah. but that, that world... Yeah. Uh, what was it? World Builder? Or world... world Machine. World Machine, yeah. Uh, that's, that, that's pretty nice too. But World Machine, it really does... realistic. It, it does give you the, uh, the base landscape, but then we'll also be making use of sort of a, uh, landscape meshes, smaller chunk sections that we can kind of like blend in there. So, cool. Yeah. So we just got pretty nerdy uh, with all the tech that's going on behind the game. Uh, give you guys an idea. If you have skills and you'd like to uh, either volunteer or help us out, you know, like maybe make a couple assets, we have a forum post that is linked below in the description. Uh, and you can come over and talk to him and just see what we have going on. Get your name in the credits. And if you're really good, once we do the Kickstarter, I'll be happy to hire some of you guys to help us. That's totally cool. Uh, Kickstarter is probably going to be in a few months still. It's, it's too early to show off and people are going to be like, what is this game? It doesn't look like anything. We have to get some real characters and real locations uh, finished. But right now, it's all about getting started, and that's a big piece of the puzzle. So I want to say thanks to uh, Cooler Master, EVGA, and everyone else who uh, threw some parts at this. Uh, one of the other things that's really cool about this machine is we put two hard drives in here. Uh, one hard drive is going to have Windows, and the other hard drive is running Linux Mint. Now, we've compiled this from source, and we have it running on Linux and Windows, so you can pop back and forth, make sure the build works, and right now it's working on both. Right. So we're developing it from the beginning to be sure that it works with Linux and Windows, and then there's always the possibility for other platforms as well. Like uh, it'd be pretty easy to do OS 10 from this. If anybody would play, did anybody play games on that? And uh, you know what, uh, PS4 and Xbox is not out of the question. I don't yeah. use them, but I'm not going to stop anybody else from using them if if it if people really want it there. And if it helps us to afford to be able to make more games in the future. <laughs> oh, cool. So, dude, thanks very much. It's going to yeah. be awesome. Thank Time you. to get to work.